All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back. We're going to do another Wireshark thing, but I realized that, you know, we could talk all day long about Wireshark tips and tricks, and that actually gets a little boring. So I thought I'd come at this from, you know, an application-specific sort of idea. So if you are interested in a particular kind of flow, then I think what you ought to do is become familiar with that flow and therefore what tools you need to be more informed or be able to study that particular flow. So the example that I do today is voice over IP. So we're gonna do a couple of things that are very VoIP specific, but they're totally cool and can apply them to other applications, but uh, we're not gonna do general tools today. Okay, so as it says in the title, we're a little worried about bad guys with this one. So we're going to do some SIP and RTP conversations. And why are we worried about the bad guys? Well, if we take a look at the flow, and it includes RTP, if the bad guy understands a little bit about RTP, you can actually play back the calls. So we'll go through and analyze a little bit about the conversations that are involved. In this case, there'll be two that we're really worried about, SIP and RTP. And then we'll do some analysis. We'll show some graphs and things like that. And then we'll see if we can actually play back the conversation. So uh, here is our topology. Now, it's just a fairly simple topology, right? We have a couple of services that are out there for all VoIP stuff. I don't want to turn this into a VoIP specific uh, sort of video, but you have other services, TFTP and DHCP, and then you have your SIP server itself. And then you've got a couple of phones that are gonna talk to each other. So they're going across a network. Now, how would the bad guy get in the middle of your call? Well, in one case, if the bad guy has access to the network or access to the server, then we can capture the traffic. But perhaps a more realistic scenario would be when you have voice over IP that's traveling over wireless transmissions. So what the bad guy needs or the bad person needs is to be able to grab the RTP stream that's going between the nodes. Now, if you grab it in both directions, that is the service or the, the source identifiers, you grab those, then you get both, the, both directions of the conversation. Okay, so let's take a look at those things in Wireshark. So here is a Wireshark capture. It's kind of a short one, right? We only got about a thousand packets. And you can see that we drop into RTP pretty quick, right? We got some SIP at the beginning. I'll do this, we'll do a SIP, right? So there's our SIP. So what's going on here is that one side has tried to call the other one, and then eventually there's a hang up. Now, right in between here, you can see we jump from packet number 20 to packet uh, 1020. Well, that's because in between here, we've got all of this RTP stuff. Okay, so what can we do that's application specific? Now again, this is gonna be VoIP specific, but you'll can see that if you're interested in a particular flow, you get used to a couple of tools, really helps out for that application a specific need. All right, so we can see we've got a menu right up here that says, well, we got VoIP calls, We've got some RTP stuff going on here. We've got some additional statistics that we might look at, right? Uh, so maybe what we'll do is take a look at first the flow. And so if we take a look at flow graphs, we can see that this is the entirety of the capture. And it's kind of fun. I can see all kinds of different conversations. But what if I wanted to limit it to the display filter? Now, it might be kind of tough to see because it's so doggone small. That's a little better. Okay. We can see that we've got the, the invite, which is somebody making a call, and then some status, it rings, and then we pick up, and then eventually uh, the call proceeds. So that is the flow graph. Now, what does a flow graph do for you? Flow graphs are fantastic for a couple of things. They show you... First, the, the endpoints that are involved here. This happens to be the, the node that's calling and the SIP server. So this is one end of the conversation. We've got timestamps along the way. So it, it tells me how fast this conversation is progressing. So no matter what app you were dealing with, it would be great to take a look at the flow diagram so you can see where the delays might be. 
you can see the direction of the conversation, right? With little arrows here, and then the messaging, IP addresses, and ports. So flow uh, graphs are very, very handy, or flow diagrams are very, very handy for getting access to some information that we want, right? So any application that you're trying to troubleshoot or understand, take a look at the flow diagram for it. Well, let's let's reset things and we'll take a, another look at things here. So if I say VoIP calls, what this does is it, it goes through and analyzes the entire set of packets. And then it says, here is a call that I found. Now we could get the flow sequence again right here. Now this shows the entirety of the, the conversation. Now previously I had a filter on for SIP. Now I'm ignoring the SIP filter and I'm saying, well, what is everything that was involved in this particular conversation? Now, just very quickly, the way that a, a, a VoIP call works is that SIP, or whatever your signaling protocol is, is used to set up the RTP stream. And so that's how Wireshark understands that this RTP stream goes along with this particular set of SIP messages. And then we can see all the way at the end, we have the buy or the hangout. Okay, we'll close this and we'll take a look at some other stuff. Let's take a look at the RTP streams themselves. Now here is an example of an RTP stream, right? And here's the reverse, right? So we're calling, it turns out that RTP is identified as just sort of unidirectional or one way. And then the answer, the person that you're talking to uh, talks back to you, but that's a different RTP stream. Now, as you can see that all I did was click on the the analyze button and we've got a lot of information about this particular transmission so if i've got a set of packets again no matter what the application is and i'm worried about latency packet loss or jitter or the performance at any any time then i could take a look at this particular kind of analysis but i can also graph it now this graph doesn't look like it's trying to tell me very much and what happens quite a bit is that when you try to pack too much on a graph, it becomes very difficult to graph things together because their, their values might be different or things like that. So what we're going to do is eliminate some of the values here to maybe get a little clearer value. So, and maybe what we'll do is we'll just look at one stream. There we go. And now you can see when we're taking a look at the jitter, for this particular stream, right? This is in, in milliseconds here. We've got this very, very clear picture of what's happening with the jitter. Now, if we saw wild swings or excessive values, we might worry about this particular stream. Well, the thing that you've probably been waiting for is can I play this particular stream? So let's take a look. And we can see that I've got two different graphs here. This is for the forward and the reverse direction. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. And hopefully the mic will be able to pick up what's what's playing here. Say hello, hello, hello. There we go. So that is the content of the RTP stream. Now let's take a little closer look at what's going on in the packets how does wireshark know that well in the rtp stream we can see that rtp the rtp header you can see it right there it's g.711 but that is the codec that's being used if i click on the payload right we can't really decode the payload in, a, in the packet view but because we know what the codec was used to encode this particular stream then we know at least the algorithm that was used to encode it. And so if we have software that can reverse that, well, then we can get the voice back from that. And so this particular one was encoded using G.711. G.711 is probably the world's most popular codec today. Uh, G.729 is another one. But there we have it. If you're program if your packet capture software like wireshark understands the codecs then you can play them back and any bad guy getting in the middle of that call can play back your packets can understand exactly what you just uh what you just did and i didn't do anything special here to grab this it was just a wireless transmission 
and where I grabbed a, a particular set of packets. Well, there we have it, Wireshark tools that are specific to your particular application. So again, this one was specific to voice over IP, but you can see that even though we were looking at VoIP, a lot of this stuff can be directly applied to whatever application or transmission you are trying to troubleshoot or understand. So we took a look at the flow graphs. Flow graphs are fantastic for understanding the messages that are involved, the endpoints, and the timing of those messages. But in this case, also, Wireshark understands certain codecs. So if your packets can be captured, then they can be played back by anybody that wants to listen in. In some cases, if your server is compromised, the conversation are actually saved as a particular kind of file, like a WAV file or something like that. And once they have access to those, of course, they can play them back as well. Well, I hope this added more power and flex to your wire sharpness like and subscribe if you're ready to tackle that uh, traffic and whether you're graphing or just listening in may those packets always reach their destinations